president to swear in three new commissions. Nigel Hughes says it wasn't me. City Hall restoration to finish next year. And the need for real waste solutions. I am Nuriko Balford, and this is Uncut News. Do you see news happening? Send us a tip on WhatsApp at 592-659-6154. Weeks after the president went ahead and appointed the new Integrity Commissions and the Police Service Commission without any real opposition consultation, he is now set to appoint three more commissions on Friday. The new members of the Judicial Service Commission, the Teaching Service Commission, and the Public Procurement Commissions will be sworn in despite the fact that members of the Judicial and Teaching Service Commissions haven't even been announced yet. They did begin consultations on the matter last month with Norton, to which there was supposed to be a second meeting, but for whatever reason, that meeting never occurred between the two. Anyway, we're probably just going to hear Norton complain about it, but won't do anything meaningful. According to Guyana Daily News, they fired their editor-in-chief, Ronald Singh, after his report on the GPS handling of the Christoph de Nobrega quinden shooting case supposedly contributed to yesterday's debacle on the East Coast. The Guyana Press Association has since released a statement disparaging the media entity, letting the public know that it does not recognize Guyana Daily News as an actual news entity. I will agree with them on that, but let's be real. The Press Association is about as effective as thoughts and prayers are for school shootings. Since we're on the topic of reporters lacking due diligence, Nigel Hughes is currently distancing himself from a report published by the newsroom claiming that his law firm is representing Christoph de Nobrega, the cop accused of shooting Quinton Barkas. He said that attorney Kezia Williams, the lawyer representing the man, left his firm years ago and has been running her own practice for more than two years. Last week, the attorney filed a motion for the officer to be released from close arrest. However, the Ghana police force on Tuesday stated that the policeman was still in custody or on open arrest. This morning, suspected drug trafficker Andrew Morgan was charged at the Diamond Magistrate's Court with trafficking narcotics. On Monday, Kanye arrested him when they found just over seven pounds of the white stuff at his home in Eccles East Bank de Marara. Morgan pleaded not guilty and was remanded to prison until August 4th. Now it's time to tell you about Best Buy's Car of the Week. Currently on sale is his 2016 Suzuki Jimmy Sierra four-wheel drive. It comes with regular and low-range four-wheel drive, Bluetooth, mark rims, new tires, TV, CD, stereo, fog lamps, bar camera, and much, much more. Buy cash for $3.4 million. All pay as low as $700,000 down, with around $67,000 monthly for five years, and it is yours. Call or WhatsApp 662-0844 for more info. Or visit the show rooms at 171 Bureau Street, Queenstown. Or to Lama Street and the Lamega Century for this sweet deal. Tess have confirmed that 25-year-old Richie Hansraj and 34-year-old Justin Tashira did in fact die from ingesting a large amount of cyanide, a poisonous substance that investigators also found in the back of the vehicle their bodies were found in on April 23rd of this year. The tests were conducted at NMS labs in the U.S. after local autopsy results were inconclusive. Meanwhile, an autopsy performed today on the body of 19-year-old Anissa Miguel concluded that the mother of one died of drowning. According to the forensic pathologist, no injury or marks of violence were present on her body. The police are still investigating the circumstances surrounding the death of 28-year-old boat captain Saigon Hopkinson. On June 6, Hopkinson's body was discovered inside of a fuel tank on the boat. Regional Commander for Division 2, Shiv Prasad Bakas, said that the police are also investigating the relatives' claims of foul play. Hopkinson's mother told the newsroom that she believes her son was murdered and then stuffed into the tank, even though the post-mortem results stated that he died as a result of chemical inhalation. She said that his body had several bruises and what looked like a broken neck, but the post-mortem said there were no marks of violence on his body. Nevertheless, Commander Bakas says that... Once the investigation is finished, the file will be handed over to the DPP. Wow, I'm sensing a running theme here that I honestly pray is just a really odd and sad coincidence. On a more positive note, the ongoing restoration works at the dilapidated Georgetown City Hall is scheduled for completion for June 2023. Last year, a $780 million contract was signed with a restoration firm to bring the 138-year-old structure back to its former glory. Construction was slated to start on October 2021, with an expected completion time of 18 months. For the best crotch in Guyana, wait, 
That should read, for all size of clutch disc and pressure plates for heavy-duty trucks in Ghana, check out Powered Automotive. Get this and other high-quality truck parts at the lowest prices. Visit them at Lot 1161 EE Eccles. Or call them on telephone number 6970171. Save big on truck parts at Powered Automotive, the number one heavy-duty truck parts store in Ghana. Now for today's oil update. Look out, Guyana. We might have some competition with Suriname for the spot of the next oil-producing powerhouse of South America. Suriname's recent oil finds in Block 58 puts the recoverable resource count at over 5 billion oil equivalent barrels. But seismic data obtained by Suriname's National Oil Company suggests that the Surinamese basin holds some 30 billion barrels of oil equivalent overall. Currently, some 32 million acres, or just 40% of Suriname's offshore oil blocks, have been licensed, leaving over 60% untouched. Much of this acreage falls within said basin. So, with all of the development planned for the two nations, especially in the oil industry, both governments are pushing for greater cooperation in this sector. You know, isn't it great when we can all make money together? Now for our stupid news of the day. You know what I think is stupid? Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a new result. This is why I rolled my eyes when I heard there was another weekend cleanup campaign in Georgetown recently. It is unsustainable to keep doing this, and the places they clean get dirty again almost instantly. Random cleanups of just a few select streets are stupid, and they're just PR campaigns. If we want a lean, clean, and green capital city... Oh gosh, I just sounded like Hamilton Green. Ugh. Anyway, if we want a clean and green city, there has to be a complete revamping of our relationship with waste. If you want to change behaviors, you have to remember the stick and the carrot. We must teach in schools how to reduce, reuse, and recycle everyday objects. This needs to be taught to adults too, because they're often worse than the children, honestly. City wardens should then enforce strict anti-littering laws. If you are found littering, you're fine. Made to clean up the streets, and you have to take the children's class on waste management and pass it or suffer another fine. That was the stick. Now, as for the carrot, we should have an annual competition for who has the cleanest home, the cleanest business, or even community. There should also be a category for innovative repurposing and recycling of waste. The government should encourage the private sector to take the lead and adopt the streets they're operating on and to sponsor such cleanup efforts. Yes, we can punish all day. But if you inspire people, you're more likely to positively change their behavior in a big way. It might not be robbery season, but the streets are still mean. That's why you need to get security for your home and business through Sheriff's Security Service. Sheriff's Security offers well-trained guards, armed and unarmed patrol, marine patrol, K-9 services. These people even got drones. Why? Because your security is their highest priority. You've seen the rest. Now hire the best. Hire Sheriff's Security Service today. Now for today's uncut news, viewers poll question of the day. Every day we pose a question about current events in Ghana, the region, the diaspora, and how you feel it least was. Last night I asked, what is your opinion on the protests? Lloyd Bartholomew says, there seems to be no real accountability when it comes to police committing crimes. There seems to be many facets of the force and none are coordinated by any responsible authority. Sadly, the citizens have to seek justice by protests. I see. Tamarin Gao says, there is very little to add to your perfect summarization of the recent protests. Thank you. I deeply feel we need more small, knowledgeable people from these communities to try and lead these groups. They have concerns, but as you said, these actions distract from solving them. Indeed, unfortunately, it's absolutely right. Todoran Budu says, protests turned to robbing and looting has become a common theme. Mohamed Yassin says the head of the police department that was there while the robbing and burning and looting of the vendors and property was happening did absolutely nothing. He should be sacked or demoted. Meanwhile, Jay Jairam says it's an excuse for the looters. Not sad that you feel that way, but you know what? I haven't heard from you in a while, Jay. Good to see you still around. And finally, Cliff Morion says Mr. Oren Boston was shot by the police in his bed. The villagers protested. Nothing fruitful came of that. Please correct me if I'm wrong. You know, honestly, that statement reminds me of a quote from Martin Luther King Jr., where he says a riot is the language of the unheard. Now, before we get to tonight's question, you can multiply your cash by selling Digicel Top Up. This is a legit way you can earn some extra money at your business or to supplement your current hustle. Become a Top Up vendor quick and easy by linking with Cellular Plus. Call them on telephone number 685 3109 for more info. Now, for tonight's question. So far, we have seen the government's response to the violence and the protests. I want to know do you think that response is enough, or what should the government do instead? I want you to think about that question and tell us in the comments below. If your response is good enough, we just might feature it in our next episode. Anyway, that's all the time we have for tonight, and check us out tomorrow for another. Until then, I'm Rico Bullford saying goodnight, folks.